the Concorde is probably the most appreciated aircraft in the entire aviation industry. Even to this day, it is admired by many, many aviation enthusiasts by its technology, engineering, and lots of other stuff that has innovated. And today, we're going to be looking at how this thing actually flew. This piece of art, this piece of engineering, and this piece of modern technology. But first, let's go back to the 19, to, and to the end of the 1960s, where this aircraft flew for their first time in 1969. It, fl it flew for the first time and it was not until 1976 when it entered service by, by the development of France and Britain, specifically by Air France and, uh, and accompanied by British Airways BA. This aircraft is designed to go faster than the speed of sound at Mach 2.04 which is really really fast and this aircraft was able to make it only three hours from from Paris to New York and vice versa. With this aircraft, you can literally make business trips and in a short amount of time without needing of any sleep or any other seven hour flight. It was or at least they thought it was it was very practical to have a very fast aircraft. And the, the only way it could achieve that was going all the way up to 60,000 feet, which is really high. This aircraft basically made, uh, made transatlantic flights, and it was literally a masterpiece of technology. And, and I, as, as I said before, even to this day, and especially back then when aviation was not only at its golden age, but it wasn't that modern like today with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. But yeah, basically, it it, it entered service in 1976, where it operated by Air France and British Airways, and it ended. It had its its retirement in 2003. So, how did this aircraft actually fly? Well, first of all, let's let's start, let's go first with cold and dark. It, it obviously said it like this, and the thing you need to know about this aircraft is that the engineers had to keep it as light as possible. In other words, it didn't have any air conditioning of any sort, uh, I mean, in any sort. It didn't even have flaps with the things that go down to increase drag and increase lift for, for takeoff and landing. It didn't have slats for the same purpose and it, it didn't have spoilers the things that go up to increase drag it didn't have any of those the only thing that mattered right now is speed and agility this is what the con the concord was about so while it sat there even a hot day it would boil and it would boil down the inside part of the aircraft and what also didn't help is that the windows you can see over here they are crazy small and this is a scale model, obviously, but you know, but these are actually you know really small, They're about the size of of literally my hand. That's how that's how big the windows were. So even even though you were in the window seat, it could be literally very uncomfortable. And yeah, that was really the one well, the only downside the the downside of the aircraft. There are also other downsides, but we're gonna talk about it later. So it said it there. And the pilots made the the startup checklists and all of that. And what it basically did is that it started its four engines specifically, uh, uh, the the Rolls Royce uh, Snegma Olympus 593 turbojets. These engines are capable to perform an afterburner and also uh, reheat during during takeoff and during the Mach transition. And yeah, so after. <clears throat> so basically, after it started its engines, you know, it, and then after pushback, this then this nose, which actually occupied the most of the of the pilot's viewpoint, um, it actually and the only the only way to solve that was to actually make it go down. It's called the Snoop Droop. I, I to be honest, that's a really weird weird name, but anyways, it it went down. And to to increase pilot's visibility during taxi, and and uh, and also takeoff as well. And then once during takeoff, these engines, which are really 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 powerful, they went to the afterburner. And since what I talked about, it didn't have any flaps. It would have to take off at a really really fast speed, like 
really really fast at around 220 knots which is really fast for uh, for any airliner and it, it'll have to take off at those speeds and which in other words it would require an, a lot of runway and energy so it just took off and then during climb it would it would like, retract the snoop droop all the way to its uh, to its former position and then and then it will initialize its trajectory towards the Atlantic, which is what it made most of its flights. And then after the snoop droop was retracted, the, the aircraft would accelerate really, really quickly. The afterburners are still on, and they would accelerate really, really quickly until it, it performed what is known the sonic boom. The sonic boom is basically the transition uh, from the speed and from normal from normal speed to the speed of sound and it's called a boom because because what you basically see is some sort of reaction that happens very instantaneous instantaneously from here and from out there marking the um the, the passing of the speed of sound and that boom actually was really not only really loud but it also <clears throat> but it also didn't help the environment below uh, the the people can hear it, and not only did the people can hear it, but they also, they and the objects below stopped working because of that sound, which is a, a quite literally a shockwave. So, so yeah, that is that was one of the issues. And then after the transition, it would climb all the way to sixty thousand feet, where around that it was sixty thousand feet, where it re, it remained a cruising altitude. But why so high? A normally aircraft, a normal airliner from today, they would climb all the way to 35,000, maybe 40,000 feet, and this thing climbed to 60,000. Well, simply because if it's lower, the density of the air increases, and it would increase the tendency of, of any damages caused by the insane airspeed. So what you want is to lose as much, as, as much airspeed as possible, and but still still have the same ground speed or in other words the same um, the same Mach number Mach 2 Mach 2 but the airspeed will be lower because the the density up there is lower and that is why it went all the way to, uh, all the way up that is probably the most comfortable part of the flight because not only the engines are at the at the best performance i mean the the full performance but it's also the air conditioning or in other words the pressurization system and uh, actually works so the temperature is finally being controlled and and the engines are way are way quieter after that so yeah that was you can see how hard it was to fly actually fly this aircraft as a passenger and you can also see why it retired at such an early age compared to the Boeing 747, which is another legend that's unfortunately being retired today. And so anyways, the aircraft will begin descending uh, re actually quite fast uh, towards its destination, whether if it's New York, Paris, whatever, it will start descending. And then on the approach, uh, once again, it didn't have any flaps, so... And so the only problem is that the aircraft had the aircraft had to land at a very high angle of attack. In other words, the airspeed would be hitting uh, would be hitting the aircraft more than it would fluid. And basically, you would see it like this during the flare. And that is why they made the brilliant idea of putting a, a tail gear over here in case of a tail strike, which is something that can happen quite often. And yeah, it just landed. Most of the, it was quite hard to land the aircraft, even in the flight simulator, it's quite hard. And they, they just landed it. I mean, they landed, and the process is basically reversed from what I talked about, and to, uh, what I talked about during the pre-flight. Except they just taxi to a gate and then shut down the engines. So yeah, so basically, this aircraft have many issues, such as the noise, the environment impact, the um, and the temperature and one thing I didn't mention which is very important is the costs because they were literally expensive mostly because these engines consume a lot of fuel and this fuel 
which is is probably more at least more than 50 percent of what the every flight costs so that is why they had to increment it a lot while while normal normal flight air from airlines they just they were around here but not that expensive at least compared to relative to that time and yeah that was a very big issue because it was very uncomfortable for the for the price and and when you don't have that many passengers who don't who don't want to uh, spend that much money and it's, it, it is really an issue because despite having despite had not not having many passengers the flight costs the same and each seat costs the same and that is why the the best the uh, probably the most economic flight is to make the entire aircraft full but but in the Concorde that was not the case the aircraft was normally half full or maybe even less than full that is why that was one of the issues and they couldn't help in the incident of of Air France 4950 I think that was that and correct me in the comment section it was Air France uh, 40, 4950 4590 it was 4990 and that it, it basically took off it took off, and then <clears throat> during the during the takeoff roll, um, one of the engines captured a debris caused from the from another aircraft that took off after before that, and it made an engine failure, and it basically it was forced to take off because it already it was already too fast, and and it ended up crashing into an apartment building, which was quite tragic to be honest, and. To be honest, by many other people, because it was a quite severe accident, and yeah, that was a contributing factor to why this aircraft had to retire, and also the rise of terrorism and 9/11, which also didn't help with this luxurious aircraft. I mean, luxurious. And so after 9/11, and I mean after the accident, they had to ground the aircraft, and they were expecting it to. And to recover it, but 9/11 came in, so they had to ground it even more until they finally decided to retire it in 2003. And yeah, so that is probably the full story of the aircraft. Probably uh, not only the most innovating uh, invention ever made, but also you know <clears throat> some knowledge because because if you want to be fast, you also have to be efficient. If it, in terms of economy, because you can't just oh, I can I just make this insane aircraft that can go faster in the speed of sound. You also have to take care of the costs, and also, uh, also you have to uh, you have to think about the air conditioning and all that stuff, which is crucial for a high quality flight, which is what any luxurious passenger is looking for. So that is why you should think think outside the box instead of just thinking fast equals good. And that is the main reason why flights started to become more efficient. And in other words, uh, the golden age of aviation is over. And and that is why more airlines that are that are able to make the flights cheaper are starting to exist, such as you know, such as here in Mexico is, is Viva Aerobus. And and Ryan, I think Ryanair is also the cheaper one, the EasyJet, many other stuff, and and yeah, I just wanted to leave that as a as a message. And if you like if you like this video, I highly encourage you to to subscribe, because these videos are very helpful to you to gain some knowledge about aviation and you know some and even just economy what I talk about. And yeah, I thank you thank you so much for watching. And if you have any doubts, leave them in the comment section. And we'll see you on the next video. Happy flying.